one's gonna have to clap. That's the good shit. G'day, welcome to Upscale This, the show where we take some of the older games that we that we used to love a little bit. They kind of hurt to look at, so we blow them up and and kind of kind of make them look a bit sexier. Today we're having a look at Ratchet and Clank, the Ratchet and Clank trilogy on PS3, as you can see right here by this this little shrine that we've got going on for us. My name's Cringe. I'm joined today by my mate Cody. How's it going? Good. Yeah, had, we had a good time playing uh, oh, Ratchet and Clank. Good, actually, yeah, I enjoyed that too much. Because you played a fair bit of it on the PS2. Yes. And it was really good then. And still good now. And it's still good now. But yeah, we we spoke a little bit about how like how groundbreaking it was at the time. The graphics just stepped straight up from what was before GoldenEye, Spyro to let's have all these polygons. Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. Let's have all these polygons make it look so much better. Obviously, it's not going to stand up to PS3 games that were native from the, the system. But visually, it does it hurt that much to look at? Once you blow it up to a high resolution, you blow it up to a slightly, about double the frame rate. 60 frames a second and 1080p that we played it in. You obviously look at the buildings and they kind of look blocky and some of the textures look kind of low yeah. res. But if, it, if we like like through bloom effects and if we threw ambient occlusion and if we threw like all of these and all particle effects and, and all stuff like that if effects. you pretty much just put it through UDK and rebuild the levels yeah you could get something pretty good out of that I feel a lot of that speaks to how kind of spartan the level design was at the time I guess very platformer yeah exactly because yeah. at the time it was more of a focus on gameplay than on graphics as we've seen with the Ratchet Clank re-release on PS4 parts of the level that we went around in was yeah. Metropolis Metropolis which is the big one yeah everyone started off in they've remade some of those scenes like really really closely and I'll, I'll throw up some footage of it because it's probably we're probably gonna have a look at it later today yeah and be like holy shit but as it stands it's actually not that bad to look at well they'll probably also be covering it in the movie the Ratchet and Clank movie yeah true well it's mm. gonna be interesting to see what it's mm. like in a movie oh shit yeah so you've got like PS2 PS3 PS4 movie, movie. I haven't had high expectations, which well, is probably bad. But. That, that's that's one of the uh, appeals of going back to something like Ratchet and Clank, because the writing is so strong. Mm. A lot of it leaned on that comedy, a lot of that fun. It was all comedy. It was yeah. great. Just sitting there listening to Quark or something like that. It was great. It's it's almost like they made these characters very similar to something of like a cartoon. Like it wouldn't look out of place if it was like a two D art style on like Cheese TV or Toaster TV, right? Like, I, I, I could see day. it having a like a one season TV series or something yeah. like that, just for kicks. Yeah, that could that easily happen. do that. Yeah, the the writing was good. The voice, the voice acting was actually the the audio of the game in general. Like you've got all of these guns and all of these sound effects, and none of them felt that repetitive. like none of them felt repetitive, but none of them felt like synthy. Because mm. like coming off the back of PS One, obviously it's like holy shit, we have a full CD to work with. Going to a DVD, they've got a lot more room for audio. They've got a lot of room for high bandwidth audio. There. Yeah, yeah. And some of the sound effects that you get, particularly with some of the guns, don't sound hollow. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like it was like a proper shot. Which is something that even today some games kind of fall, like, fall down on. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, here's this new gun. It has the stupidest sound. It's really like, dumb, yeah. And yeah. you hear it non-stop over and over and you're like, fuck. It's like, I can't shoot this. Why? Graphics good, writing's good. Gameplay. First thing that I jumped into the game was like, camera control. That's not right. Camera control is inverted. Strafing doesn't exist. Strafing? Oh. It, I think it's in 2 and 3. I think that's what I was I thinking. I swear it's in number 1. I... We couldn't find it. <laughs> like, when you go back and play older games, like maybe Ape Escape or something like Croc, and you see that they're kind of... I used to a, have Croc on PC. A, yeah, a lot of developers. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, Croc on PC is actually a perfect example of, like, how people who haven't put the time and the effort, and it's a lot of time and effort, particularly yeah. with the start of, like, 3D platformers, they were the pioneers, and some of them worked better than others, you know? Mm -hmm. Spyro and Crash are probably some better examples, and Nintendo did a lot of good stuff too, obviously. They did. Going from jumping around and movement, because that was obviously a big focus of platformers in the PS1 days, right? Yes, being able to have fluid movement. To going into combat. There wasn't a weird sort of shift there. It was very fluid going from gameplay to combat to gameplay to combat, because yep. you're thrown between them very rapidly. What would be interesting is if we had a look at some of the newer games in the, in, in, in the in, series. In, in, ooh, like, they had... Well, there's a new one coming out, isn't there? There's a PS4 one. Yeah. I fucking pray to God I'll have enough money to buy a PS4 by the time it comes out. The Ratchet & Clank has been a consistent series on PlayStation yeah, they've brought since out. 2000 and... One -ish. One? Yeah, like early 2000s. It That's, was there at the start of my primary schooling. That's a decade and a half yeah. of games yeah. that they've had time to improve on. Three on the PS2, three on the PS3, and now they're releasing the first of theirs on the PS4. It's going to be interesting because Insomniac did Uncharted? Uh, Sunset Overdrive is probably one of Sunset the better. Sunset Overdrive. Okay, so I'm thinking Ratchet and Clank with the style of that. With the With quality. the amount of polish, yeah. The amount of yeah, polish, polish of the that. movement and the, the back oh. and forth like banter, the quality banter. A lot of it will but come it's... down to writing and, and like that comedy and... 
the theming of the game, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, the one of the other games, I think it might have been 3, had a little bit less comedy and more it was towards it was story more serious, driven. yeah. More serious driven. I still enjoyed that one, but I, I'll still go back and play the other ones because they're just more entertaining. That's what we thought of Ratchet & Clank 1, uh, originally on the PS2, on the PS3 we were playing it on. If you've got any thoughts or anything about the Ratchet & Clank 1 or Ratchet & Clank series in general, feel free to drop them in the comment section. Uh, if people want to find you, if people want to try and dig around on the internet and find you, any place they can find you. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you want to catch up with anything that I'm doing, you can find me on Twitter, where I am at Cringeweb. You can find me on Twitch, where I stream... There's a whole lot of random friends. You'll probably be rocking up on there this weekend, actually, yes. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> That's uh, at twitch.tv slash cringeworthy. And uh, as always, you can find everything that I'm doing here at youtube.com slash cringeworthy. Uh, thank you so much for watching. That's it from us. Talk to you later. Peace out.